Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is April 12th, 2024, and the battle is continuing between Jean Laporta and Nasser Al Khalifi. Also, the club are very close to renewing the contract of Pau Cuarci. And finally, Barcelona are set to fight for the new Joao Felix, Jose Melro. We have a lot to discuss. So let's begin. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Mo and this is the Barca News Live Podcast, which is on every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, usually at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I do apologize for starting late today. My computer crashed, took forever to get it back on. It's back on, but I'm definitely, definitely in desperate need to get a new laptop because I've been having a lot of problems with this one. But the important thing is I'm back on online. I'm ready to give you all the Barca news and I'm ready to interact with you wonderful people in the chat section. So make sure you drop your comments so we can get a discussion going. For those people who will be watching when the live stream ends, don't worry. I'll be putting timestamps in the description. Chat is in the timeline. That way you can skip through the discussion if that's what you want to do. Having said all of that, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment. All of this helps this channel continue to grow now let's uh, st start with the news right away because barcelona are set to wear a special edition jersey for the upcoming el clasico match and they have officially announced what the jersey will look like this is something i discussed several weeks ago when i said that barcelona was going to be partnering up with the colombian singer carol g and now this has been officially confirmed by fc barcelona through their website and social media accounts and this is what the jersey, how the jersey will look like. It has Carol G's um, logo, which is the heart made out of barbed wire with her name in the middle. I'm not a fan of the design, to be honest. I'm not a big fan of the artist either. But I do like this thing that Barcelona are doing. I do like the fact that Barcelona, through their sponsorship with uh, Spotify, are merging two of the biggest entertainment worlds, which is sport and music. I like that Barcelona are featuring different artists on their jerseys. I like that they're doing these collaboration, these special edition jerseys, because after all, it does bring the club a lot of money. So I'm not a fan of the, uh, of the design. I'm not a fan of the artist, but who cares? As long as it brings Barcelona more money, I'm all for it. After all, these jerseys will cost around 400 euros for just a jersey with the design. And if you want it signed by Karol G, it will cost 3,000 euros. So definitely hefty prices for these special edition jerseys. But again, as long as it brings the club money, I don't care. So that's what will happen on a classical day. Now, let me know in the comment section or in the chat section, if you're watching this live, what do you think about this jersey design? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Which artist would you like to see? Let me know in the chat section now let's continue with the news because this was a very short bit of news let's talk about another bit of news which is the battle that is continuing between the barcelona president jan laporta and the small clubs president nasser al khalifi because as i reported in a previous video there was a little bit of friction between the two clubs on the day of the match where first of all al khalifi did not go to welcome jan laporta and the board of directors not only that, he didn't even have dinner with them, which was supposed was which was supposed to happen. Khalifi ended up leaving Jan Laporta hanging at the club, uh, at the restaurant, I'm sorry, or stranded at the restaurant. It looks like Al Khalifi's excuse for that was that he was fasting for Ramadan, which is understandable. But nonetheless, he could have still went, welcome Jan Laporta and his party to the city. But like, all right, you guys have fun. Have go have dinner. I'm fasting. I cannot eat. I'm sorry. Or he could have even popped in the restaurant, said hello, said hey. Enjoy your dinner. I'm not going to be able to eat. All those alternatives could have happened, but instead he did not show up to welcome Laporta. He did not show up to the dinner that was planned between both boards. So Barcelona did not like that. But nonetheless, they have accepted Al Khalifi's explanation, which is that he was fasting for Ramadan. However, there is no explanation for what Al Khalifi and PSG did as far as tickets, where they told Barcelona, the board of directors, the Barcelona board of directors, when they were at the airport, that they were only going to allow a certain number of directors and everyone else had to pay for their own tickets 
which would cost 600 million euros per person. Now, see that Barcelona are still upset about this, and now it's their turn to return the favor to PSG because it's reported that Barcelona are planning on the day of the match, the second leg of the quarterfinals of the Champions League, to do exactly that, where the members of the board of directors of PSG will be welcomed for free, as always. However, all their guests will have to buy their own tickets, and guess what? Barcelona will be charging them 600 million euros per person, which is something that Barcelona has never done. Barcelona has always welcomed not only the board of directors to their stadium for free, but even their guests. So if a board of director wanted to bring his wife, his kid, his mistress, whatever, Barcelona would be like, we don't care. Come in for free. Everybody's invited. But since PSG turned around and did that to Barcelona, now Barcelona, for the first time, are going to charge all the guests of the board of directors of PSG 600 million euros per head because that's exactly what PSG did to us. So it's time to return the favor. So good job, Jean Laporta, on doing this. Because after all, we cannot let small clubs treat us like this, especially a small club as small as PSG from a farmer's league called the League. Oh. Anyways, let's start with the chat section. And then we will talk about Pau Cuarcy's contract renewal. All right, let's see. Kill Bill Mad says, give like for Mo. This channel is growing really fast. Thank you, my friend. Yes, please. Guys, hit the like button. That's the best way you can support this channel. When you hit the like button, it prompts YouTube algorithm to recommend the channel to people who've never seen it. So it's a very good way to support the channel. And of course, it's free. It only takes a second. It doesn't cost you anything. But to me, it's a huge, huge, huge help. Jabba the Hutt says, I hope PSG is finished after Mbappe leaves the season. Honestly, I don't care if they're finished or not. After all, I don't concern myself with small clubs. You know, I'm not praying that. I don't know, Levante get finished or that Getafe get finished. They're small clubs. Who care about them? Same with PSG. They're a small club. Who cares about them? They can do whatever they want in their farmer's league. And Samba says, hey, Mo, I don't think Xabi's a good coach, but we but we don't. We don't. Oh, we don't know if Flick can develop youngsters as good as Xabi or Amorin or Pep or Luis Enrique. Um, Pep. My friend, Pep developed the best generation of youngsters. Um, and here's the thing. I do agree that I've obviously made it very clear that I don't think Xavi should continue. But as far as developing youngsters, yes, Xavi has given them the opportunity to start in the first team. But let's not forget, the people who develop the youngsters is not the first team coaches. It's not Xavi. It's not Pep. It's not Luis Enrique. It's the academy. It's all the coaches in the academy, in the Cadete A, Cadete B, Juvenil A, Juvenil B. It's Rafa Marquez in Barça Athletic. Those are the real people who are developing these youngsters. The first team coaches, they're the ones who give them an opportunity, which Xavi has done a great job doing that. He has, you know, bet on, um, on Pau Cuarcy. He has bet on La Mini Mal. Hector Four, he's only bet on him a few times, but nonetheless, he has given him opportunities. He's given opportunities to Marguiú. So for that, of course... You know, we should definitely give Xabi credit. But let's not forget, first team coaches are not really the ones developing the young talent. It's all the other coaches that you never hear their names and they never get mentioned. They never get the glory, nothing. They're the real ones who are developing these youngsters, the coaches in La Masia. Samba says, why are we trying to get Bernardo Silva for 50 mil when we can get Paulo Dybala? My friend, that's like asking, why are we trying to get Messi when we can get, I don't know, Iwain? I think the answer is pretty clear because Bernardo Silva is 10 times better than Dybala. That's why. And then 4A says, is it Jose Melro Portuguese? Yes, he is Portuguese. All right, let's move on since we did mention youngsters, but let's talk about Pau Cuarci because Barcelona are very, very, very close to extending the contract of the 17-year-old defensive prodigy. Yes, I, you heard that right. I have called him a prodigy because he is a prodigy. Anyways, Pau Cuarci, he still has, you know, a, an academy contract, if you may. He has a release clause of around, I think it's 7 or 8 million euros, which is incredibly, incredibly low. Any club in the world could afford that. 
especially now since every club in the world wants Pau Kwarsi. Therefore, Barcelona started working on extending the contract of Pau Kwarsi in order to increase his release clause and shield him from outside temptation. Now, what's the problem is that Pau Kwarsi is only 17 years old. And when you are under 18 years old, you cannot sign long-term contracts. We all saw how Lamin Yamal only signed for two years because he cannot sign long-term contracts. But there is an agreement, of course, with La Minia Mal's agent, Jorge Mendes, to extend his co contract as soon as he turns 18. So the problem with Pau Cuarci is he still has a year until he turns 18, but Barcelona have come up with a plan. They have negotiated this plan with Pau Cuarci, and it's reported that the plan has been accepted and that the contract renewal is very, very close to completion. Now, what Barcelona are going to do is give Pau Cuarci a one-year contract where they're going to increase his release clause in order to shield him from other clubs who are trying to take him away. And then as soon as he turns 18, they will give him a new contract, a new, new contract, a second contract, which will be for five years. So yes, it's going to be six years total, one year contract until he turns 18. As soon as he turns 18, a five year contract, keeping him at the club until he is 23. That's insane. Six years later and he's only going to be 23 if Paul Quarcy stays at Barcelona we have a very very long time with him it's pretty insane but anyways Barcelona and Paul Quarcy are very very close to finalizing this contract renewal they say there are some discrepancies right now between the club and Paul Quarcy's family who are demanding a little bit more money than what Barcelona are willing to pay or what Barcelona think they should pay to Paul Quarcy so there are differences right there but Barcelona expect these differences to be ironed out because the club have made it very clear to Cuarci, we want you to stay. And Cuarci is not interested in any other clubs despite there being dozens and dozens of clubs interested in him. Pau Cuarci has said, no, I just want to remain in Barcelona. Barcelona want him to stay. So both parties want to continue the relationship together. Both parties have agreed to this one plus five year deal. The only thing left is to iron out the small details like how much they're going to pay him, things like that, clauses, et cetera, bonuses. But once those things ironed out, the contract will be signed, will be sealed, and Cubarsi's future will be secured at the club. And things are going so well that Barcelona are expecting to announce, to officially announce the contract renewal before season's end. So definitely, definitely good news. Barcelona doing a great job and working hard on securing the future of our young talent because they are the present and the future as well all right let's see what else are people saying in the chat section danielle lizardo says everybody hates vinicius because he is black no people don't hate vinicius because he's black people hate vinicius because he's a clown because he he's an idiot you see how he behaves on the field he is always making fun of insulting taunting abusing, verbally abusing other players, other coaches, other fans. He's always running his mouth. That's why people hate him, which is an absolute shame because Vinicius is one of the most talented wingers in the world. Like, no doubt about that. Vinicius is an incredibly, incredibly talented player. He does not to be. He does not need to be doing these things. He does not need to be acting like a clown. Those are things that are usually done by small players, like players who are not that important because they know they cannot compete with their skills on the field so they play these mind games, they run their mouth because that's how they compensate for their lack of skill. In the case of Vinicius, he doesn't need to do that because he has plenty, plenty of skill, plenty, plenty of talent. He's one of the most skilled and talented attackers in the world. There's no need for him to do that. But yeah, he still does. I mean, and it's gotten so worse, we're so bad that his own teammates, like we've seen the images of Cross just like pulling him, like, dude, shut up. We've seen Ancelotti yelling at him, like, dude, shut the F up. Like, Stop it. And yeah, he continues. So no, people don't hate Vinicius because he's black. People hate Vinicius because he's a clown. Because he does not know how to behave. That's why. 10-4-A says, everyone hates Vinny because he's always played a victim and so toxic. Yes, I agree, my friend. And hold on. Let me wear my glasses. I don't know why I took them off. Chukwu Nonsa. I hope I said that correctly. Said Xavi is soft and knowledgeable, and most times he hypes the opposition, unlike Luis Enrique. I agree, my friend. Um, let me see what else. Oh, hold on, it's frozen me. There we go. Then for A says, should Sama Nomoko La Masia player a uh, game 
get game time for Barca first team this season? Um, no. He still has plenty of time to develop before playing with the first team. Jasper says 600 million euros per season. Mo, they can buy a new stadium with that money. What are we talking about? I'm confused. Anyways, uh, all right, let's get back. Are you talking about the? I don't know. Anyways, let's get back to the news because we do have to talk about the young sensation, the player that everybody's calling the new Joao Felix, Jose Melro. That's actually unfortunately they're calling him that. I really hope he's not the new Joao Felix because we've all seen how that has that turned out. But anyways, Jose Melro is someone I talked about in the channel. I think it was two, three months ago. But he's a 19-year-old attacker, versatile attacker, can play multiple position, who's currently at Benfica. He's currently playing for the reserve team. He has yet to break through to the first team. But so far, he has scored 11 goals in 14 matches. And he is cre creating plenty of ways of, in Europe with many clubs tracking his progress because they expect him to be kind of like the next big, big thing to come out of the Portuguese league. And amongst these clubs who've been tracking, Jose Melro is FC Barcelona. And that's when I first reported about this young player, which is when the news broke that Barcelona had been tracking his progress in the Portuguese league. Now, Barcelona want to sign Jose Melro. However, they think of him as an option for the future. So they were still tracking how he does. He, they were still tracking his progression with the idea to sign him down the road. However, all of a sudden now we have Lil from the league uh, ready to snatch him up, which has now put pressure on Barcelona to accelerate their plans to try to bring the new Portuguese prodigy to Barcelona. Now, Lil are about to lose a very important attacker, which is Jonathan David. Looks like he's headed to the Premier League. It looks like they're going to be making a lot of money off his sale. So they need someone to replace him. And they are looking at Jose Melro to replace him on the first team. And they're going to be, and they have already started working to make the signing happen in the summer, which again has put pressure on Barcelona to accelerate the signing of the youngster because Barcelona were looking to sign Jose Melro down the road. But of course, now they cannot wait because Lille are about to snatch him up. So Barcelona are going to have to act this summer in order to avoid him going to Lille. Because if he does, of course, when Barcelona try to sign him in the future, he's going to cost you know, 10 times more. So Barcelona are now forced to act this summer. Now, the plan is that if Barca Athletic get promoted to second division, which it looks like it's going to uh, could really happen. You know, right now, Barca Athletic are sitting second in their group. Only three points behind first place. If they finish first place, they automatically get promoted to the second division. If they finish in second to fifth place, they qualify to the playoffs. Where if they win those playoffs, they could obviously qualify to the second division or get promoted to the second division. Now, the plan is that if Barca Athletic get promoted to the second division, then Barcelona will sign Jose Melro for Barca Athletic. That way they can have kind of like the same plan as Noah Darvich where they have this young, up-and-coming, very, very promising player in Barca Athletic, learning, developing, growing. And that way, once he's ready, they can promote him to the first team because right now, Jose Melro is promising, but he's not ready for the first team yet. So Barcelona, if Barca Athletic make it to second division, they want to sign him, have him continue his growth at Barca Athletic. If Barca Athletic do not make it to the second division, Because Lille are offering him first division spot or a first team spot. Now, to convince a player, say, okay, you're not going to play in a first team, but you will be in second division, that's, they might be able to sell that, right? Second division of La Liga is, you know, as good as the first division of, of the French League. But when you're talking about first division versus third, now it's not as easy to convince them. So that's the plan. Barcelona, if, the plan for Barcelona is that if Barca Athletic make it to second division, they will sign Jose Melro for Barca Athletic so he can continue his growth and development. If they don't, they're still going to try, but Barcelona think that it's going to be incredibly, incredibly difficult to convince him. All right, let's get back to the chat section, and then we will talk about another youngster, Messino, who you guys always ask me about. 
Valerian Pereira says, hey, Mo, Faye should start tomorrow. Also, Vitor Roque. I will talk about the start tomorrow. Um, we'll see. Maybe Faye will get some minutes tomorrow. I don't see him starting, as it should be. He hasn't played a single minute with the first team. You cannot just start him right away. That's how you ruin players because that's a lot of pressure on a player. And also you're talking about going from third to first, first division. It's a big change. We saw him in Pau Cuarci when he first started playing with the first team. He was struggling. He couldn't finish full games. He would get cramps around the 60, 70th minute. So you cannot expect a player who's playing in third division to all of a sudden start in the first division overnight. You have to ease him into it, right? You have to bring him in a few minutes, then have more minutes, then more, more, more until they can finally play full 90 minutes. So if I hasn't played a single minute with the first team, you can't just start him. That's just unrealistic. Um, we'll see if he gets minutes. Hopefully he can get some minutes. I think tomorrow's match could be a great time to, to, to get him some minutes. But, um, I mean, to throw him as a starter, that's, that's just not realistic. Emmanuel says, Mo, we have to try our best this coming Champions League game. We have to work hard. Amen, my friend. I said this in a previous video, but I'll say it again, people who didn't hear. I really think if I was Barcelona, I would really focus on the Champions League because I think La Liga is done. Um, I know it's a little bit negative of me to say that, but there's eight points between us and Real Madrid. And for us to win La Liga, we're going to have to be perfect until the end of the season. Win every single match, and even then that still wouldn't be enough. Even if we win every single match, then we would need Real Madrid to lose three matches. I don't see Real Madrid doing that. I don't see Real Madrid bottling the La Liga and losing three matches towards the end of the season. So I think La Liga is, is a done deal. I mean, of course, things strange things happen. Miracles do happen. Things would always happen. But realistically speaking, La Liga is most likely done. So I think we should... If I was Barcelona, I would focus more on the Champions League because the Champions League, we have a chance to make it far. I'm not saying we have a chance at winning, but we can make it far. Maybe the semifinals, who knows, maybe even the final, right? And the rewards for that would be much, much bigger than fighting for La Liga and still ending up second, right? Because if you make, if you make it to the uh, semifinals, it's a big bonus for Barcelona. If we make it to the finals, that's even a bigger bonus for Barcelona. That's like tens of millions of euros that could help the club a lot in this current financial situation. Not to mention that increases our chances of making it to the Club World Cup, which that's another 50 million euros. So I think we should focus our efforts on the Champions League because I think La Liga is lost at this point. I just don't see Real Madrid losing three matches. You know, I see Barcelona winning every match from here until the end of the season. That's a possibility, but we need both, right? It does not, it's out of our hands. It doesn't depend on us to win La Liga. It depends on what we do and on what Real Madrid do. All right, let's see. Um, Jay Tan says, hey, Mo, it's my first time catching you live. It's Kenny Chungu watching you from Zambia. Welcome to the live stream, my friend. I'm glad you joined and... I hope to see you on the live stream more often. And Sampana says, I really want to see Mark Bernal come to the first scene next season. Him and Christian can split time. I think we could go for Andre Trinidade or Joshua Kimmich as our next DM if La Masia don't make it. All right, now the goal is Onana. That's what Deco wants. He believes we have enough technical midfielders. He wants more of a big, defensive, strong destroyer. So the, the goal right now is Onana um, with the backup plan being Turam, Kefren Turam. As far as Mark Bernal, I'm sure he will get his time. You know, he's still developing. He's still growing in the Masia. I'm sorry, in Barça Athletic. Sometimes um, Juanila. So I think he's still, I'm, I'm sure he'll he'll have his, his moment. We'll see how he also he does in the preseason. Because remember, the preseason is a great time to try out players from the academy see who can be promoted, see who can get more minutes with the first team. So I'm sure, um, you know, I'm sure we'll see him more. Jose Fernandez says, Mo, love the podcast. Enjoy the commentary. And I'm amazed how you get all the facts from across the pond. Oh, thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And speaking of facts, let's move on to our next segment of news, which is 
Esteban William, otherwise known as Messinho, because the 16-year-old attacker has officially debuted in the Libertadores. If you don't know what the Libertadores is, it's the equivalent of the Champions League of South America. It's actually a very fun competition to watch. Um, it's, it's a lot more competitive than the Champions League, in my opinion. I'm not saying that it's better than the Champions League. I'm just saying it's more competitive, where the clubs participate are a lot closer to each other as far as skill. That's what I mean. Um, I don't want people blowing up my comment section tomorrow like, oh my God, Mo said Libertador is better than Champions League. He doesn't know nothing about football. It is. Um, so I think it's very competitive because the clubs are very close to each other in skill. And you also get to see a lot of young and up-and-coming talent. That's what I like about the Libertadores. Because, you know, we're seeing we see players like Hendrik, like Messino, you know, Neymar before he moved to Barca, etc. So Messino has officially debuted at the Libertadores with Las Palmas. <laughs> Las Palmas. <laughs> with Palmeiras. Sorry, it's been a long day. And it's Friday. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, Palmeiras and he actually scored Palmeiras third goal because Palmeiras played against Liver Liverpool de Montevideo it's a team from Uruguay they defeated them three to one and uh, Messino played uh, sorry scored the third goal and he played once again as an attacking midfielder so it seems like slowly he is switching from going from being a winger a right winger more to an attacking midfielder, which is something I talked about previously in the channel where that kind of increases his chances of coming to Barcelona because Barcelona were thinking, you know, if we have to spend 60 million euros on a young promising right winger, why do that when we already have a young promising right winger named Lamine Yamal, right? But now that Messina is starting to play more and more as an attacking midfielder, that perhaps can open up a spot for him and Barcelona. Now, the news is not just that Messina just debuted in, in the Libertadores. The news is that Barcelona are still tracking him. They never stopped. I know some news came out because Fabricio Romano said something that we had already said multiple times in this channel. But the news is still the same. Barcelona are still tracking him. They're interested in him. They believe in his talent. They believe he's going to become a future star. They would love to have him. But... He is not the number one priority for the club. Why? Because Barcelona have very limited resources. They have very limited space on their wage bill. And therefore, they can only focus on priorities. What are the priorities? The pivot. Why? Because we don't have anyone. Right? Yes, Messina is promising. Yes, he could be a brick star. But we have plenty of attacking midfielders. We have Laminia Man on the right. He's not as a as big of a priority as some as the pivot because there's nobody there, right? What's the other priority? The left wing. Why? Because there's nobody there. So Barcelona are still tracking Messina. They're still interested. He's just not a priority. That has always been the case. That never changed. I don't know why all of a sudden when Fabrizio Romano said that he wasn't a priority, all of a sudden everybody was like, oh my God, he's not a priority. He never was. Nonetheless, Barcelona are still tracking him and they're still interested in him. We'll see what happens. Messina does want to come to Barcelona. His agent, Andre Curi, has told Barcelona that if they want to sign him, he will come. That He's going to do everything in his power to bring him. But we have to see how the club's finances are. Of course, in 2025, that's when Messina turns 18. That's when he will be able to come. Hopefully, by then, the club will be in a much better financial situation and will be able to sign this guy because Palmeiras do want $60 million for him. So that's it. All right, let's get back to the comment section and we'll see what people are saying. Dania says, and when in the Clasico, uh, win and one slip is two points behind Real Madrid, we have a chance. I mean, the chance exists, obviously. It's not over. Mathematically speaking, it's not over. But... You know, what are the chances of Madrid losing three matches? Because remember, we cannot tie on points. We have to beat them in points. And the difference is eight points. So we would need a difference of, of nine. So we would have to beat them in a Clásico. 
and Madrid would have to lose two more matches. And we would have to win every single match from here until the end. And remember, we still got to play Girona, who, yes, they've slowed down now towards the end of the season, but let's not forget, Girona scored four goals against us in our own stadium. And we still have to play them in their stadium. So, anyways. Xeno says, Mo, I saw you struggling with Faye's name. Fai is pronounced like lie, L, but replace L with F. Fai. Okay, cool. Finally. Yes, thank you. I've been struggling because I've heard Fe, I've heard Faye. So, Fai. Thank you, my friend. Mark says, if we beat Madrid, we only need them to drop five points. Uh, I don't think so. I think because, well, it depends how big we beat them. Um, but actually, I think that's when goal difference comes into play, if I'm not mistaken. Because they beat us, and then we beat them. Because it used to be goal difference, right? If you're tied in point, it's whoever has the uh, better goal difference. But they changed that to whoever won matches against each other like if you tie with someone else like in points and you beat them when you face them you uh what's it called you win so i think if we beat them since they beat us we will be tied on points and i think we will be tied as far as wins and losses against each other so i think then it would go to goal difference if i'm not mistaken i could be mistaken but if that's the case we would still need more than eight points because they have a bigger goal difference. Um, so, yeah. Anyways. Jasper says, agree. Barca should focus on Champions League and try to go as far as we can. It's uh, it's be good so far. I agree, my friend. I agree. I agree. Noel says, Mo, isn't it important to win La Liga games to keep the momentum and morale up? Of course. I'm not saying we should just abandon La Liga and just say, fuck it. We're going to play the Juvenila. Just bring in a bunch of 15-year-old kids. Be like, all right, kids, go, have fun. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying prioritize the Champions League, not give up on La Liga, you know. Um, it would be kind of funny, though, if we, like, just had a bunch of, not even, like, Juvenila, maybe, like, Cadete Bay, like, I don't know, like a bunch of 12-year-olds just playing <laughs> La Liga matches. <laughs> I think it'd be hilarious. But, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying prioritize the Champions League a little bit more. Uh, and let's see. And <laughs> Mark says, oh, my God, Mo thinks the Libertadores is better than the Japanese League. <laughs> I know you're joking, but believe it or not, people take the stuff I say out of context all the time. It's like crazy, the comments I come across. Uh, let's see. Koranteg says, Amadou Onana or Subimendi? Who else do you prefer? I prefer Subimendi. Uh, I've said it before. I think I prefer more of a typical Barcelona pivot, someone who's more technical, someone who's more good with the ball at his feet, distributing the ball you know, combining with his teammates uh, versus a big defensive physical midfielder. Because whenever we've had that, it hasn't really worked out for us. Um, so I don't know why we keep insisting on it. You know, um, and here's a, a little story about our greatest coach. Well, maybe that, one of the greatest coaches. I don't know if we can choose a, our greatest coach. But Johan Cruyff, the guy who instilled our Barcelona DNA, when he first got hired by Barcelona as a coach, La Liga was an incredibly physical league. It was all about big, strong players who would just beat into each other, right, during matches. And when Johan Cruyff takes over Barcelona, he starts signing all these small technical players. And at the time, people looked at him and said, you're crazy. You are not even going to be able to finish the league. It's like you got a team of a bunch of small, weak players. They're going to get killed. They're going to end up in the hospital on stretchers. They're going to get killed because La Liga is incredibly, incredibly physical. And what did Johan Cruyff do? He won four La Liga seasons in a row and won us Barcelona's first Champions League. Because the Barcelona DNA, the Johan Cruyff, Cruyffism, instilled is it's not about size. It's not about how big or strong you are. It's about the motion of the boat. Just kidding. But it's about technical ability. It's about moving the ball faster, fast, faster than your opponent to where you exhaust your opponent because they're constantly having to chase the ball. Meanwhile, you do bare minimum because you're just passing the ball, right? You're barely running. 
It's the opponent that's constantly running after the ball. And if you move the ball fast enough, you're going to create chances because a ball is always going to move faster than a person. Always. So if you can move the ball fast enough, you're going to break lines. You're going to get through defenders. So that's what the Cruyff philosophy is and was. So it's not about how big the players are. It's about how technical they are, how well they can read the field, how well they can pass, how fast they can circulate the ball. Not about big, strong guys that's just beating each other up, right? Anyways. All right, we'll do one more, and then we will end it because we are at 35 minutes. I don't want to do any longer. Let's see. Um, Goran Thing says, hey, who do you prefer pivot for the pivot position? Oh, well, like I said, to be Mendy over or Nana. Diego says, Mo, what do you think of Girona Gami? Think it's going to be like that first leg, I believe. Oh, did you mean game, Girona game? Like the first leg, I believe Barca are finding their foot now. Forza Barca. I don't think they're going to beat us again 4-0. Because Barcelona have improved a lot from that match. And Girona have done the opposite, where they have kind of slowed down. So I don't think it's going to be a 4-0. Um... That, that's what it was, right? It was 4 0 4 1. Um, but they could still beat us. You know, it's not, a, oh, we're just going to go over there and just demolish them. They could still beat them. I believe we can win. Don't get me wrong. I believe we can win. But we have to be careful. We can't just go and think we're just going to go in there and do whatever we want and just destroy them. Not the gamer says, if you had to sell any players or players at Barcelona right now, who would you sell? Oof. Right now, right now. Uh, Uriel Romeo, of course. Marcos Alonso is leaving, so we don't have to sell him. Uh, I personally wouldn't renew Sergio Roberto, but like I said, if they renew him, they renew him. I don't care. Uh, either way, he's not making that much to impact the team. Uh, Rafinha, I would still sell him. I know you guys uh gonna be like, oh, he just had he just scored two goals. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but that's a handful of good matches in a sea of bad ones. That's not enough for me to keep a player who's cost us 60 some million euros he's the most expensive signing of la of the new la porta era um ferran torres and i think i would sell inigo martinez i love inigo i think he's a great great defender but with faye coming up from the first team uh, i'm sorry coming up from barca athletic to the first team with pauco arci we have to make space for the youngsters. You know, it just doesn't make sense to prioritize a 32-year-old. So I would sell Inigo too. And I would return Joao Felix. And who am I missing? I think that's it. Obviously, the low knees, you know, sell Das, sell Ling Le. Um, I think that's it. Unless I'm not thinking about someone or not remembering someone. But yeah, those will be my choices. Anyways, I don't want to make it any more long because people complain when the videos are 10 minutes. They're like, oh, my God, it's so long. So I can't imagine what they're going to say about a 38-minute video. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your likes, your comments, your subscriptions, just for being amazing, period, because you guys are amazing. Oh, and thank you for being patient. I know it took me 40 minutes to get my computer up. So thank you for being patient. I do apologize about that. I'm going to get a new computer, I promise. Um, if I, especially when I end up throwing this one out of the window, cause it keeps pissing me off. But anyways, I am going to upload another video. There's more news that if I had discussed it here, it would have been three hours long. So there is, I'm, I'm going to upload a, another video in like about an hour. So stay tuned for that. But thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. And as always, peace. Cabarza.